Okay, so welcome back. So now we're going to add the next step along the way to our diagrams and our drawings here, and that is the core shadow. Okay, so I'll start to work in our right core. How about over here? Core shadow. So <clears throat> the idea, and this is a refresher. You should be familiar with this in basic drawing and from the, the uh, figure lecture that I've just, you should be watch, have, had watched not too long ago here. The core shadow. Now, where the light source is, in this case, the, uh, the top left, kind of in front, shining down, okay? Where the light source is, you're going to find the core shadow, the darkest part of a shadow that gives you that turn to be on the opposite ends of that, okay? Where the light ends and the shadow begins, thus is where the core shadow exists. Now, that core shadow is blended form, kind of banded, okay, across the form, we're working on the sphere obvious, for obvious reasons, and obviously, and that starts to locate here, and it works across the fat part of the turn of the form, okay, and it blends into and defines the reflected light. So you got to keep catching your edge, especially in painting it, but also in drawing. Right in there, see I catch that edge, okay? It gives you this reflected light. So this is core shadow, and it's going to be strongest. It can be up here, but it's going to be strongest at the direct opposite of the light source. So the light source is top left, kind of in front. It's going to be bottom right and sort of behind, if you will, a little bit. Now that cast shadow will start down here where the core shadow ends, across this ball, I'm going to have, go ahead and darken that in so you can see that, this diagram. But see how it gives you that nice pop. This area, right in through here, that's our core shadow, okay? It is the core, the deepest, darkest part of the shadow. It doesn't have to be absolute dark on the value scale. It can be 8s, 9s, 10s. Sometimes it can be uh, lighter than that, depending upon... If it's an outdoor situation, it can, can be very light, diffused, because of outdoor light. Um, so the uh, other part of the core shadow that I love is it gives you, okay, it gives you beyond the Oreo cookie, it gives you third 3D, okay, and it also gives you that turn or pop, popping out of the um, paper-like illusion, a three-dimensional illusion. Okay, it also gives you reflected light. So it defines when you blocked in earlier, like in the cylinder, okay, that was just one mopping. But now, because of the core shadow, we get reflected light. So you get two for one. You get core shadow and you get reflected light and you get your, your light and you, we can define that and, and manipulate that manipulate that later. Okay, so really you get two for one. I love that. You get two for one with the core shadow. Isn't that nice? Let's go on to the cube here. So the cube, we've already done our Oreo cookie. We've blocked in. We've separated light from dark. We've said our light source is coming over here, right? And it's shining down on the object, okay? Slightly behind it, which gives us a three-step plane. We have a light, a medium, and a darker side. Well, the core shadow on a 90 degree plane, in pers this is 90 degrees right here, okay, in perspective, right there to 90. What's going to happen, according to that light source, just like over here, the opposite of it, it's going to congregate in the edge some, always on an angular object. Even this edge, it'll congregate some in through here, less so probably here. Okay, now that's where the darker core shadow is going to be, and then it's going to fade. It's going to fade because we're going to get reflected light, right? And how do we get that? So the light's hitting here, but some of it's hitting all the way over here, right? And it's bouncing, boop, it's bouncing right back up onto this form. Catch your edge a little bit, a little darker across the edge. I won't do the cast shadow for this one since I've got the arrow. So light coming back and bouncing back up to... The plane. So that's where you get this little lighter area. So this is that core shadow congregating and gathering in these edges right through there. And you might even get some on the medium side too as well. Congregation in those edges, meaning that it holds on to in those corners 
just a little bit more. Running through there. And then it's going to fade to reflect the light. Nothing over here will be as dark as it is on the lights of the darkest shadow side. That's the medium side. So this is plane one, light, plane two, medium, and over here, plane three, dark. Okay? And that's how core shadows congregate on. So if you're doing volumetric figures or you're drawing buildings or whatever it is you're doing, you can get, you'll understand how to manipulate that light. And you get also two for one, right? You have to sail today on drawing. And you get you get core you get core shadow and you get reflected light absolutely free. No money back guarantee. All right. So <clears throat> lastly, with the cylinder, we're going to have a light source here again from the left shooting down on the object. That's going to make that core shadow the opposite, right in through here. Okay. So the cylinder and the sphere relate to have a kind of a rounded form. It's kind of a smash up between the cylinder and the sphere gives you, uh, or the, excuse me, the, uh, the sphere and the box gives you the cylinder a little bit. It's got that rounded form so we can add that core shadow here coming across and let's give a little contouring. It's kind of like a sawing effect. We can blend that, turns that form around, just keep moving it. And so remember that the core shadow has to be blended into the dark side that gives you the reflected light, but it's got to be a smooth transition. It can't be harsh. It cannot be harsh. It's got to be a smooth transition. So we have that, right, coming through core shadow. Fairly dark, sevens, eights, nines, and then we'll blend it now into the lighter side to create dark form shadow and light form shadow. Like so, look at that. We're on our way to getting 3D pop going in our cylinder, right? Okay, right in through there, that gives us reflected light, lots of reflected light, kind of like what we'll see in a moment from. Prude home. Cast shadow where the core shadow starts there, over and out a little bit. Now the cast shadow, it's not really about cast shadow, but it is darker closest to the object. And then as you immediately start to work your way out from the object, it gets lighter, gets reflective. Why? Well, it's the same idea we had here. Light comes over, shoots over here, right? And then boom, comes back over, shoots over here, right, boom, comes back over, and it gives us that beautiful reflected light. It gives us that turn that we want. Core shadow, a little bit here, not a whole lot on the top lip, and then this fades a little bit to flatten out. And that's what we get. You'll get a little dark shadow, kind of like here, along the edge, congregating as it turns away from us. But it's not as, nowhere near as dark as the core shadow ever. See how that wants us to turn away now? We get a little bit of turn there, and that gives us that 3D across, right, woo, across the form. It goes behind it and comes back over. So it's very important, okay? All right, so there is a core shadow part of adding to the block in, to the mop in, to this core shadow. If you can control those steps, you're well on your way to drawing the human figure in value and atmosphere much better, but control those steps. Do your lay-in, your gesture, your volume, find your line of being, contour out your figure, then block in and mop in first, then find your core shadows, and after that it's all about refining, refining further, and you really get the sense of getting a good figure going and in a lot quicker time. This process is not something I tell my students this is that I here at NKU that I developed you know on my own in my office like 30 minutes before I came to class. I'm like what what can I make up here? This has been around for 650 years maybe about 700 now okay in terms of Renaissance good drawing practice and it works for every technique and expressive techniques beyond just traditional drawing. 
So it's something that we've been utilizing forever, and it's worth every student's time to slow it down and to analyze this by having it diagrammed out for you so you can practice it. And you need to practice. Do these diagrams on your own like you're teaching somebody, or like you're teaching yourself. You know, you're lecturing to yourself. You can even talk to each other. Just you probably want to do it where no, none of your friends are around because they make, may make fun of you that you're talking to yourself. But you get the idea. And the more you do this, you can apply it to the figure. And then, of course, you draw quietly, obviously. It, well, you get the idea. And this will give you a greater sense of purpose. And that's, that's what this is for. Okay, let's go on to some diagrams now. The three Prudhon figures that we did for the block end, the mop end. Let's go add their core shadows. All right. All right, so for now for our next step is to go find these core shadows, okay, on the model. So core shadows, where are they? Well, now the light source is coming from the right and slightly in front of her at the top. So here, in front, out here, and around and over on the model, okay, in these areas coming down. So that means that the core shadow is going to be on the left and lower mostly and hit. So for instance, in this buttock region, we see the core shadow here now, right? Coming through on the model. Okay, like so. Because <clears throat> where the where the shadow and the light meet, or where the light ends and the shadow begins, that's where the core shadow is created. Okay? And remember, it's kind of a band, but it's a soft transition into the light and also into the shadow. It's got to be a smooth transition. It's very quick, but it's got to be a smooth blend. Okay? That doesn't mean you blend it with your fingers for now or your hands. Be careful. Of that. Or your feet or your nose or your hair. Now I'm teasing. But you get the idea. You want to make sure that it's a soft Okay, transition through and around here. Okay. So we're coming through and around. This, this feeds into this area, right in through here. So we'll keep coming up or lower down the back either way. It's that banded region. Of course, of course, yeah. Look how it gets, gets you that pop. Okay, it gives you that turn. I'll put pop in through here. Not pop art, but 3D popping out. Okay? It pops out. And that's what we want. It comes off the page. Okay? And through here and around to the scapular region and over. Just follow that form with the lights reading. It's the same thing on a figure it is on a simplified object. Now this is a little cast shadow. It's a little darker. It comes up the neck, casting from the head. So that's all a little darker. Right and through. Okay, it's not crazy dark. And then we come through the spine of the back. Right in through here. Okay, and over. And then we have a coarse shadow now off the scapula to the deltoid. Right in through here and around, soft. Your coarse shadows are always going to be soft. If you have a harder edge, it's probably a cast shadow. That soft core shadow. Blending into the reflected light. Let it be that way. Don't fuss with it too much. Now we have a little cast shadow here coming off the back to the scapula. Right into here, see that little stronger edge? It's a little bit harder edge. And coming down, then we'll fill that in. This form of the back, right in through here, it, uh, the lights over here, it's, it's casting its form onto the other side. So I'm going to pull the spine, the rhythm, a little bit further downward. This way, curve it a little bit more, give it a little bit more rhythm. It's a little stiff. Go back and double check that. Okay. The buttock split, a little bit of cast shadow on the top, the sacral, sacral area. A little dark right in through there. You want those dimples of the sacrum to come out. Through here, cast shadow. We'll go ahead and hit it as a dark. It helps us to get the bottom of the buttock. Okay, we're pretty much here. There's a little uh, 
darker kind of core cast shadow form in through here that's soft that we'll go ahead and just put on the arm. We'll just go ahead and call it kind of a soft core shadow. And in through here, a little cast shadow coming down her hand. Not as concerned about any of that for now. Okay, so let's go up to the head a little bit. Let's keep coming over here with our shadow shade. In our contouring, soften that up. In through here, okay. Let's come down the head a little bit. Can tease out the ear a little with that shape. In through there. Nothing fancy and we're not going to get into any detail. So the hair is a darker value, right? But as we come along, darker value, but the core shadow is about right where the highlight is underneath it. So that's a little bit darker than the rest of the hair. It's hard to tell, but it's there. This gets a little lighter at the top and there's a little dark kind of crevasse in her hair there. Right in through as we come across. Okay. And we can tighten up this head a little bit. We don't have to do too much to the brow. That will come in the detailing later stages right in through there. Give a little bottom tint to the, the nostril shadow here in the eye. Don't need a whole lot. And in the mouth, we'll just give a little indication of all that lip material. A little bit of a push of the lip and downward to the chin for now. Don't need a whole lot in through there. We'll put a little bit of dark on that and cover that. Area through. <clears throat> a little bit of core shadow right in through here. And then we'll just leave her head there. Here for sh uh, uh, shadow there. And then coming across, we don't see too much more. We just we don't want to get too complex in through here. Core shadow. Core shadow on the back, which gives you that reflected light. Okay. Core shadow. Reflected light, core shadow, reflected light. Coming down through the buttock and the leg. Let's come down the leg here. Curving over to the lower thigh, back of the leg. <clears throat> Coming on through. Core shadow there. We get a lot of reflected light in this image. Beautiful. Beautiful case study in reflected light complexity there. Back of the leg, core shadow here. Okay, through underneath the calf and over. And then downward. Fill out that form a little bit further and through there. Same thing over here, lots of core shadow, cast shadow too. We'll go a little bit darker in through here because you get it, pick it up right in through here, back on the ankle. You get Lots of core shadow there. You don't get. He doesn't give you a lot of reflected light there. We get buried in, and you get a little bit of dark over here. That's mostly cast shadow from the other leg, so we'll get that through there. Don't want to go too crazy there. Okay, so we pretty much got well what we needed from this little diagram here about the uh, core shadow. Of course, this shadow here really sets off the model, but we won't, we won't use it. The point of here is, is the core shadow. I've got this arm to do here, don't I? Don't we? <clears throat> Forget that. Core shadow. Pretty much a classic kind of cylinder, isn't it? Okay. So, lights. Okay. Here's that Oreo cookie, right? Darker. Okay. Right in through there. Light, dark with the darker with the core shadow. We want to blend that with our tool. And then a little bit lighter in contrast. Very important right in through there. To show that off and we get that that core shadow. Alright, here we go. So it's our first one of of three, Pierre Paul Prudhomme. All right. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right. So this pose, light source coming from the top. Okay. Analyzing here and a little bit to the right. So over in this region. Okay. Coming through on the model. Top right. Okay. 
And so we'll work, again, this one I like to just work top down. So we hit now the palm area of our model, find that coarse shadow along the bottom part of the palm, and we'll gesture the fingers in through here and over. Okay, just to give that gesture. Now we're coming across the side over here, and so on the elbow, you can see a little bit of it over here on the form, right in through here. That's the form shadow, the block in, a little bit of coarse shadow now, right in through here. Do you see it? See that reflected line is right in through there. And then the hair back here, we can go ahead and begin to just tone this in a little bit. It's a little bit darker to help with showing off that reflected light on the side of that egg form. And if it's a little darker, you can take your kneaded eraser, like I do. I'll just come across here and dab a few dabs and see how it lightens that up just a little bit, too, as well. Now we can come down and add our core shadow. Core shadow primarily in the elbow region and over, and we can kind of cascade through here. It's pretty dark. I'm going to lighten it up and give a little bit more reflected light, okay, because I can. On the uh, left edge over here, let that be a little bit more atmospheric. See how that can work? Contouring around, contouring around through here, kind of middle tone underneath. So letting some of that reflected light show through on both. And we have a little bit of direct lighting coming through the bottom edge and through here. We can just take our eraser and just take a little bit slightly of that off right in through there. We can take that, cut that through and come back and find our edge. And we can give this core shadow here on the nose right in through here. You can get in there pretty deep. And on the in through turning through there the brow. So I'll have a coarse shadow in through here just a little little bit and through. I'm not gonna hit this head too more hard. Chin right in through here. And then a little bit of cheek, more cast shadow, but we'll go ahead and include that just to keep the basics of that. And then, of course, underneath the chin, the neck will be a little darker in there. Cast shadow, go ahead and pull those core, core darker darks through there as well. Then we have a little underneath here, we have a little bit of shadow on the arm here, through here. Okay. And then light coming through that we want to get. So that shadow and that light gives us that core shadow there. As we erase, that gives us a little core shadow. And then we can emphasize that a little bit darker, just a little bit. Remember, they have to be blended on both sides. It doesn't mean you smear with your finger. That means you, with the tool, you have to soften. Those are softer edges coming down. Okay. You can go quicker with a bigger charcoal stick, but it's harder to control. So again, I would recommend the pencil for now. Alright, so we have that. Now we're going to hit core shadows coming down the abdomen, the line of bean area, right in through here. Okay, serratus so interior area, lat area, right in through and across. Okay, we don't want to get into too much detail. We just want to add our core shadow. That's the step. The rest of it's refinements and lots of detailing in here, kind of coming over. Okay, core shadow, core shadow, core shadow. Okay, see that emerging all across the figure downward to kind of underneath the breast forming through here. We can get a little bit of, it's a little bit more of a form shadow, but we'll add a little just to give the bowl around a little bit. That'll help. <clears throat> Then coming around to the lower area, you've got to be able to distinguish the difference now between the core shadow and the reflected light because you get two for the price of one again with the core shadow. You get reflected light too as well. So, okay, then we have core shadow here. Look at that coming through. Lower down and through. 
So I'm going to emphasize a little bit more reflected light than what he does for the, for the demo. We get a little bit of this iliotibial tract banding through here, vastus lateralis muscle coming over just a little bit. So I'll add just a touch of that. Core shadow here as it comes over to the knee and then down below even further with that. Those muscles. Okay. Now that's a cast shadow underneath her leg. I'm going to leave that for the moment, okay? Because this is about core shadows. And you can always get your contour turning like so on the knee. In through here, then over. We'll find that core shadow, okay? Where the light ends and the shadow begins is where the core shadow is created. Right through there. Okay, coming on down. Catch our edge a little bit to the leg. Core shadow all the way through there for now. And even across the foot. And then all this back here is cast shadow. A little bit of core, so I'll just leave that. Core shadow on the leg. Kind of an egg form. This corresponds to this whole region. This egg form. See my hand move? Right there, core shadow there, deepest part right in through there, okay, lighter, up, popping in through here, and over, and around, and through and around, coming through, knee coming out and we're pretty much there except for the breast forms we'll hit those a little here work on these a little core shadow here and then cast shadow I'll go ahead and include just a little bit here just to darken in core shadow right in through there a little bit of reflective light coming coming through and there we go we've got now our second one here in terms of our core shadow, where to, where to find those. And the next step is start to, obviously starting to now refine the figure even more, more, more fully into the drawing. We can tighten up these edges a little bit later on and be on our merry way to the next. All right, let's go on to the next one. This pose, let's go ahead and, and work on this core shadow. So again, where you know, the light source is coming from, we're going to see that from the top, generally left, in through here, and um, above uh, more so, too, because we see that on the leg and through here. So you want to analyze that. And the reason why I know that, again, is because of where the core shadows are, usually the opposite from the light source, darker, and then it will give you also the direction uh, as well. So a uh, little bit top here now, coming over and uh, coming over mostly from top and maybe a little bit left, but this is, I don't know why I put that in there, but uh, top is the, is the main, main point of that. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so finding those core shadows, not really a lot in the head, so through here, so we can leave that. We can start right in through here. See that core shadow in the palm area? Right in through there, we can start to hit that already with our sketching, right in through there. A little bit on the gesture of these fingers. That's all we'll get into. That's pretty pretty detailed. I don't want to go that far with this diagram. <clears throat> Core shadow now on the elbow and the arm. And remember, you want to make that distinction between the core shadow, okay, right in through, coming through, and the reflected light. And both those edges now are going to have to be Blend it into either side so they're soft. You want that soft edge, you know, transition throughout the, the drawing. Right in through here, coming across, coming across. <clears throat> and through this region, and you get that nice banded effect, and it really starts to take a hold, doesn't it? And bring that over a little bit further in through here, and then if you get into a spot where <clears throat> You run your core shadow into the line a little bit, you can start to take that out in some areas. But this gives you 
<clears throat> again, like the other demos here, it gives you that pop, that uh, opening up of the three-dimensionality, doesn't it, of the figure pretty, pretty succinctly and pretty cleanly and pretty, pretty clearly. Nose running through there, a little coarse shadow on that nose coming over. The neck's a little darker, it's in buried in cast shadow. We'll just take that a little bit. <clears throat> over here, this is all still in shadow. We'll grab underneath the arm, you can see that darker coarse shadow right in through, right in through here, okay? And we've still got a long way to go after this, but it's the next step along the way to in a big step, isn't it? Of getting your drawing to really turn, getting it three-dimensional and opening up to the possibilities of what's going to come after, which will be refining and lots of detail and all that fun stuff that most students want to get into probably too early uh, on through. <clears throat> right into here. And then you get that kind of bold core shadow right in through here, coming down. You really want to follow the shape of it. If it's thinner, it's thinner. If it's thicker, it's thicker. But you want to make sure it blends both into the reflected light and into the light form shadow on the lighter side. In through here where the light ends and the shadow begins, thus the core shadow is created. Kind of dramatic. So where the light ends and the shadow begins, Thus, the core shadow is created, or it's located there. So I like to flutter back and forth and blend that in, smooth that in. Look how that gives you a nice feeling of dimensionality. Coming down the model here, she's getting squeezed up against that sitting apparatus there. <clears throat> and through. your edge. You don't want to lose your edges. Even our little, little quick diagram here. We don't want to lose this uh, contouring on the outside edges. Those are important. So I'm going to grab now the calf, turning it through. Just remember that the light source was top slightly to the left. I don't know why I put that arrow. Just because it's top, that's all. It kind of encompasses everything. But, you know, up here, slightly to the left, top coming in. <clears throat> Coming through the calf and around the calf, <clears throat> running through here, catch that contouring edge a little bit, bulky calf right through there and downward, there we go, <clears throat> and then right across, it really kind of gives us a full impression of that, and slightly down as it's very top oriented. This is like an egg form or a sphere lit, it, lit from the top. Not too much in the back. We'll just leave that in the core shadow here. It's like a block coming across. Okay. And right in through here. Core shadow across here. Across the leg and the thigh. Coming over to the knee joint. Condyle on through here. That core shadow. Just be careful with if you're using a charcoal stick and drawing big. I would recommend a charcoal pencil. I can do with these sticks. They're just it's a little quicker, but it's not as easy to control. So if you're not if you're not uh, having full control, use your pencils. I prefer my students always use their pencils, almost always. I just try to expedite the lectures with a charcoal stick in this case. On the breast form, there's the core shadow. Do you see it? Cast shadow underneath. We could, you know, underneath we can go ahead and define that a little further. Hard edge shadow shape, kind of a triangle. See that, and we get the illumination, and that's pretty much what we needed out of it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little creasing back here in this core shadow in the reflected light, right in through there. And there we go. Okay. So there we go. So that, that gives you now a sense of the, the purpose of 
in the process of um, good, strong uh, core shadows and what they really do to uh, the image, You're giving it that pop and giving that turn in three-dimensionality that uh, we want. Okay, all right, so there you go. Uh, lecture on core shadow. Practice that often. Practice it on simple forms and also the figure, and you'll be well, well, well versed for the future. All right, you guys take care out there. See you next time. Bye-bye.